Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to explore the new enhanced UI with 3D Exchange 6 and in the process I'm going to be importing in a free model from TurboSquid and giving you some hints and tips along the way. So 3D Exchange 6 is currently in early access which means you can purchase it now and get all the free updates later on. Uh, it's used for importing and exporting all the industry standard format uh, files such as FBX, OBJ, SKP and uh, BVH in the case of animations into and outside of iClone. Um, so you can use it in all your favorite uh, CGI software. And we've also optimized the performance a lot. You can see uh, more from this chart here. It's a lot uh, speedier than it used to be. And we're going to be exploring the enhanced UI in this tutorial, which you can see in this section here. If you want some more information, I encourage you to visit the uh, website right here in the URL. But for right now, we're going to go over to our friends at TurboSquid, and we're going to be uh, searching for a free model. So if I uh, search like that, uh, just blank uh, field right there, and I select sort to lower prices, we'll get all the free stuff right away. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, download this attack droid robot here. You can see it here in all of its shiny glory. So we're going to be downloading this and importing that uh, via 3D Exchange into iClone. So then you can just go to the right hand side and download, uh, select your object and, and then uh, download further. Um, but thankfully I've already downloaded this so we don't have to wait for it to download. I'm just going to go to my uh, download folder here. There it is. And we have this attack droid robot right here. I'm just going to right click that and unzip it. We'll extract it to a separate folder. And we have this attack droid robot folder and then we have a further zip file inside uh, that, that contains all the materials so i'm going to right click this and unzip this as well to a separate folder and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take uh, the mtl file that's in this material folder right here i'm going to right click and copy that and then i'm going to take it back and paste it into my root folder and the reason i'm doing this you'll see in just a moment you may come across a situation where your obj file is referring to an mtl file so what I'm going to do is just take this OBJ file, import it into 3D Exchange. There we go. And you can see that nothing appears on the screen. And uh, like I mentioned before, this is because the OBJ file is referring to that MTL file. If it's in the same root folder, it'll always look for this. And it's not finding any textures to apply. So what we need to do is we need to go to our attack droid uh, back, this separate mesh group here. Go all the way down to materials. And then you can see that uh, a little bit further down there, their opacity is at uh, zero. We'll just take that opacity and pump it up to 100. So you may come across this situation. Um, just make sure that your opacity is uh, you know, at 100%. We'll do the same thing for the front. We'll increase that opacity all the way up to 100. So here we have our you know, uh, nice uh, whoops, finished model. Just zoomed in a little bit too fast there. Um, speaking of the scene tree on the left-hand side, you can actually um, show or hide the scene tree by clicking this button up here or by using that uh, I believe it's called the tilde button in the top left uh, side of your keyboard there. Um, just, uh, you know, toggle that on or off. So it gives you a little bit more space to work with. And then we also have these shader modes on the top. You can see up here we have uh, quick shader mode. We have iClone default mode, which includes all the iClone default lights. And we have some IBL modes as well, image-based lighting modes. And currently our pixel shader is on. We can uh, turn that off. And this is your basically your uh, most resource-saving mode that you can use. So you're in quick shader mode right here. It's not going to worry about materials or anything like that. Um, so you can see we have this um, object right here. If I go into pixel shading mode, we'll get a little bit more detail, but we don't want that. We can turn it off to get the most optimized uh, performance. So what I want to do first here is we have this object selected. I'm going to select both of our mesh groups and go to the top here. And we want to kind of uh, make it a little bit smoother. And the way we can do that is by using our uh, normal uh, auto smooth up here. We'll select uh, Weld Vertex and then just uh, select Auto Smooth. You, you'll be able to notice a little bit of a difference there. Um, everything will smooth out, look a lot nicer, and um, that's, you know, normally what you want to do, one of the first steps that you want to take. The next step you want to take is you want to turn on this dummy guy right here, or else press Control D as well. And this will be our regular um, character size. So you can see the attack droid is not so intimidating now that it's, you know, 10% um, uh, of the size of an actual human character in iClone. So let's go ahead and select the object up here. Let's press the R hotkey to scale and let's scale it all the way up and make him, you know, large and intimidating like that. So that's, uh, we've scaled him up to the proper size now. The next step I want to uh, do is uh, to press the F key and that'll take you to the front of the object. So you can see currently the uh, prop is not facing the front, it's not facing the camera. So what you can do is just, you know, to keep things consistent, is use the E hotkey to rotate this and rotate it over this way. And you can see our value over here in the right changes. We'll just change that to 270 to make it uh, at a perfect right angle right there. And you can see there we are. And this is the kind of size and the orientation that we want to keep it at. So once we've figured that out, we'll just press reset transform 
and that'll reset everything, the scale and the uh, rotation value. And so your uh, prop will be consistent exactly like this when you import it into your iClone scene. Let's press Control D and um, take off that dummy now. Let's get into the different shader modes and the materials. So before I uh, get into the different shader modes, I'm going to apply my diffuse materials. So I'm going to select the Attack Droid Back 01 uh, mesh group right here. Go down to my diffuse uh, channel and double click that. We're going to open up our uh, Droid Back Diffuse target file right here. And you can see that uh, that will apply to the correct uh, place right there. And in this mesh group right here, we can do the same thing. We'll apply that uh, diffuse. Uh, it's called top diffuse instead of uh, front. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. It's a little misnomer. And now we have all of our uh, materials applied, the diffuse materials. So this is what your object's going to look like, you know, in quick shader mode without pixel shader on. Uh, we can change this now. Let's go ahead and change to iClone default mode right here. Select that. And this is the, uh, you know, kind of lighting that you're going to have in your default iClone scene. You can modify these lights by uh, first pressing the forward slash key. That'll be your light 01 on the top left there. You can change the uh, lighting position to all sorts of dramatic angles if you'd like. And then you can choose other ones like, uh, you know, light 3, for example. Press the E hotkey and you can uh, move that one as well uh, once you select that light. We'll just keep it the way it is for now. And I want to focus on the materials in my uh, attack droid as well. And notice that when I select uh, icon default mode, it'll also put uh, pixel shader mode on automatically as well. So let's go ahead and apply our uh, normal maps now. So I'm going to select the uh, bump map channel over here uh, with my uh, back group selected there. And let's go and select the back normal right here. Now make sure that when you select this, you import it as a normal map. So you need to select this option right here. Otherwise, it'll import it as a gray map and you won't have the same effect. So make sure that you check that little box there that's important and uh, go ahead and open that. And now you can see that we have some changes occurring on the uh, section over here, the section down here especially. So what I can do, select that bump map and we can, you know, take off the strength. And you can see the effect that it has right there. We get a lot more detail, especially in this like little pipe area here and uh, the grill, whatever it's called down there. And then let's do the same thing for the uh, uh, front part as well. We'll do that and uh, apply the bump map to here as well. And uh, top normal right there. So you can see that when applies, it looks quite nice. We can, uh, you know, increase or decrease the strength here. And you can also use the, uh, you know, forward slash key for the lighting to get, you know, a more dramatic lighting angle. And then you can uh, modify that uh, normal map even further. There you go, you get that kind of um, effect. We'll do the one for the um, back here. You can see down there, that's the effect that it's having right there. So, you know, when you change the uh, lighting angles, you get more of an effect. Let's uh, press the forward slash key and bring it back up here again, just for now. And then let's go ahead and apply those uh, specular maps as well. So this uh, model also comes with specular maps. So let's select the droid back uh, mesh group, open up our specular channel right here, and we have droid back specular. So if I apply that, you won't notice much of a difference. And the reason for this, there's another little uh, material snafu that you have to worry about on the bottom here. This one imports the specular map. Uh, the specular color is actually set to black. So when your specular color is set to black, you're not going to have much of an effect uh, for your specular map. So what you want to do is uh, change this to white. So select your specular color, change it all the way up to white. And then what you can do is modify your specular values. And you get like all sorts of, you know, shiny effects like this. Um, so always make sure that you know your uh, ambient color is fairly dark, your specular color is fairly light. Uh, it really varies and depends um, you know, on, on your different scenarios. You can modify the glossiness as well to complement that. Uh, maybe something like this would be kind of cool. And then let's do the same thing for the uh, front. So I'll select the front, double click on my specular, load in that specular map right here, um, or the top rather, so that'll be this area up here. And then what I can do, I can modify the specular value and you can see that you know nothing will change because we definitely need to change that specular color to uh, white. So let's do that. Change it up to white right there. Press OK. And then when we modify the specular values, there we go. We get some you know nice, cool specular effects. And you can um, really uh, optimize the look of your of your prop um, imported by by um, you know following all these steps right here. So there's our imported prop. And then we also have those other lighting modes that I mentioned before. So currently we're just in the uh, iClone default mode and we can use that lighting to get that you know gleam that specular gleam off of our off of our uh, prop right there it looks pretty cool we can also use the ibl lighting so this one's in a, a sunny day you know if it was a sunny day we could have our prop looking like this or this one i like this one here the hall mode if you select the hall mode uh, let's just press ctrl g to turn off that grid there 
and you get like this sort of you know lighting effect like if you're in the university hall or something like that and uh looks pretty cool i think and also you can you know change the the direction of the light here as well or your main light as well so you get something like that would be pretty pretty cool all right so that's about all the uh you know messing around we need to do in 3d exchange so the only way we can do is we can export this into iClone by going up to the top left or also pressing Control e export that into iClone. We'll just export it to the default folder, destination default, which will be your prop custom folder. We can call this, you know, um, fearsome, fearsome, whoops, fearsome droid. Let's give him a little bit of a cooler name. Fearsome droid. We can set a texture size to 1024 or 2048, doesn't really matter. And then go ahead and press OK. And that'll export it to iClone. And then we can go over to iClone and go to our prop folder, uh, custom tab and props. We have a fearsome, A B C D E F fearsome droid right there. You can see it looks pretty fearsome in that picture right there. Just double click that and add it in. And here's our uh, fearsome droid. So in all its uh, you know specular uh, glory, you can see that uh, if you use the forward slash key here, we get that nice um, you know specular look as well. So that's pretty much it for the enhanced UI tutorial for uh, 3D Exchange 6. Just wanted to give you a couple tips along the way for uh, in, in terms of materials. Uh, your shader modes and uh, also you can uh, now show and hide the uh, scene tree on the left hand side which is pretty convenient for uh, for space uh, space wise so thanks for watching again guys and stay tuned for our other three exchange six tutorials